Thank you for joining us at Community On Demand. Today's message is presented by Dan Greer. Dan holds a doctorate from Grace School of Theology and is the senior pastor here at Community Church. This message was recorded during a live Sunday morning service at Community. Let's listen in as Dan begins. Hey, if you, if you got the news this weekend, um, Israeli forces, the IDF, uh, hit, seven, hit 20 Iranian targets inside uh, Iran here in the last 24 to 48 hours. Now, they were all military targets. They were targets that, uh, that constructed uh, the missiles used by Hamas and Hezbollah and the Houthis uh, to uh, go to Israel and all. Uh, so, uh, as far as we know, th- there ha- there have been no uh, nuclear uh, facilities hit and no oil refineries hit, as far as we know. And and so, uh, some of you probably knew that news, some of you probably did not know that news. There's a lot of commentary on the news coming out. Oh, and by the way, a couple of weeks ago, uh, IDF forces took out uh, uh, Yahya Finwar, that is his name, who actually... Uh, uh, engineered the October 7th attack on Israel that killed 600 people. So, you know, there's a lot of commentary, a lot of uh, spin on the news that come, comes out of that stuff. I really don't want to do that today. Uh, I, I, what I want to do is, is I, I want to just give you some factual information and, and they use it in the message on the Shield of Faith today. And so let, just, just bear with me. I'm not going to get political. I'm not going to be giving it my opinion or anything. I'm just going to give you some uh, some factual information that comes out of the department, uh, the State Department of the U.S. and some other sources. Uh, and, and here they are: Bet- between 2001 and 2015, that's uh, 14 years. There was an estimated 18,928 rockets that were fired from Gaza uh, into Israel. Uh, uh, during that time. Then in, in 2006, there were over 4,000 rockets that were fired into uh, Israel from Lebanon uh, into Israel. Then on October 7th, during that terror attack that we, that's we been in the news, uh, Hamas l- launched another 5,000 rockets into Israel during that uh, terror attack that uh, uh, killed Israeli infants, children, teens, and adults. You all heard about that. Uh, which was very, very serious. I'm not taking it lightly. But between October the 23rd, that attack, and January the 24th, uh, January of 2024 this year, over 10,600 rockets and mortar shells were launched from Gaza into Israel. Now, the Hill reports that since October the 23rd, same time, that there have been over 8,000 rockets that have been fired from Lebanon by Hezbollah into Israel. A, a, a top Hamas commander reports that they often attack in the early morning as Israeli children are headed to school to inflict maximum damage. A, a, an early poll that was taken a, a few years ago reports that about 75% of the Palestinian population in Gaza supports the firing of rockets at Israel. Now, in April of this year, Iran, actually, for the first time, Iran launched 3,000 drones and missiles into Israel, and then on October the 1st of this year, the, uh, 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 yeah, this month I'm talking about, Iran launched 180 ballistic missiles, ICBMS, into Israel, and they have an estimated 3,000 ICBMs that are, that are ready to launch. And at the same time, we have learned by the State Department that there are 150,000 uh, rockets in Lebanon aimed at Israel as we are speaking according to the U.S. State Department. Now, that's, check me out. Go, go Google it, uh, go, go it, whatever you want to do, and, and, and check out, and this is something that you just don't hear very much. 
However, Israel has a defense system to address this barrage of rockets and missiles and martyrs that are coming into them. Let me tell you what they have. They have like three layers of defense. The first layer is called the Iron Dome. You've probably heard of it uh, referred to out there. Let me tell you what the Iron Dome is. It's comprised of interceptor missile launchers uh, with a battery uh, containing 20 of these uh, interceptor rockets, interceptor rockets uh, that are scattered all over Israel, and they're able to handle incoming missiles and rockets that are about 12 miles away. Each one of the rockets, the defense rockets, cost $50,000. So you can imagine. Uh, that, that's the first layer, the Iron Dome. The second layer is called David's Sling. Now, David's Sling uh, uh, is, a, is a system of rocket launchers, interceptor rockets. They're also scattered around, but they are able to handle rockets coming in from 187 miles away, a little bit b- bigger range. These interceptor missiles cost $1 million apiece. And then in the level, the higher level of, uh, of, of defense is called Arrows, Arrow 2 and Arrow 3, and they are able to handle incoming ballistic missiles from as far away as 1,500 miles, and that's probably what they use in this last uh, attack back at, at the beginning of this month. And, and uh, so, uh, so these are the stats that are out there. And another stat that came out is that 94% of Israeli children are suffering from PTSD because of the sirens, because of the explosions, because of the incoming, because they're always having to run and duck into um, uh, bomb shelters. Uh, and, and that is what Israel, just for your information, that is what Israel is dealing with on a daily basis. You know what? When I read those statistics, I said, sometimes I feel like an Israeli with all kinds of income being bombarded by enemy rockets. However, unlike those missiles, the ones coming at me are armed with psychological warheads of slander and blame and lies and criticism and ridicule and accusation and feelings of worthlessness and defeatism and discouragement, all these kinds of thoughts and negativity that just continue to to bombard. And and I think, what is going on? Is is this happening? I I pray every week with some of our people, and one day we're praying, Dr. Anderson looked across the table from me, and he said, Pastor, there is a target on your back. And I said, I believe it. The, The intention of these satanic missiles is to cause me personally to have doubt, fear, anxiety, discouragement, to feel defeated. The the, the intention is to cause me to become discouraged, lose hope, lose heart, just quit. Got another incoming just within the last 24 hours. I, I don't know if you guys that work here know this, but uh, we've been threatened by the Zuckerberg group that they're going to shut down our our our, our uh, Facebook. You probably know that. We we another arrow, another rocket uh, coming. Up. We get it all the time. Now, I, I say that because most of us sitting here today have experienced, are experiencing, will experience a barrage of satanic missiles, rockets, darts coming at us from time to time. And sometimes it comes in a swarm. Sometimes we feel like we can't breathe. Sometimes it comes so hard and we're thinking, I just don't know if I am going to make it. We'll get bad news, maybe a medical report. We have a conflict with someone. A, a friend betrays us. We start, we, we, we start having these negative thoughts. We start questioning ourselves. We get having doubts. Fiery arrows continue to come. And it feels as if they're coming from the depths 
of hell. You know why? Because they are. I mean, what we're talking about, what we've been talking about, is a spiritual war that I and you and all of us that name the name of Christ are in. We are in a spiritual war where the, there are you know, principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness and darkness from high places and rulers that just keep the barrage of missiles coming. But the good news is that God has provided an iron dome for us to shield us from these missiles. And we learned that in our text today. In fact, if you look at it in Ephesians chapter 6 and 16, it says, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. This iron dome is called the shield of faith. And the shield of faith is designed to do three things. I'm going to talk to you about that. And then I'm going to show you how that we can take up the shield of faith. It is designed to douse, deflect, and defend against the incoming missiles. Let me just, what we're going to do, we're going to look at this passage of Scripture, this one line that's where we're going to be today. We're going to look at it in reverse order. We're going to go to the end of the verse, and then we're going to back up to the beginning of that verse. First of all, this shield of faith is able to douse the arrows. Did you see that? You will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. Let me kind of explain to you, in case you are not familiar with the Roman shield, you may be thinking about that little round shield that they hold up in front of them. But this particular shield, uh, first of all, it is the first piece of outer armor. You know, we've been talking about the inner armor. This is the first piece of outer armor that's held outside. And it is called a door shield because it is about four feet tall, about, about three feet wide. It's in a curved um, fashion. I think what they do is they wet it, they put it around a cylinder and hold it there until it takes that form. And then it's made of plies of wood that are glued together and, uh, uh, and covered in a leather covering. And in and, and, and his book, Dress to Kill, Rick Renner writes that the Roman soldiers, b before they would go into battle, they would take their door shields and they would put it in a trough of water and let it drench until it was soaked. And then they would go out into the battle and when the, when the enemy would fire arrows at them that was dipped in pitch and lit up on fire and would shoot and hit their shields, it would actually quench or douse the flame of the arrow. It was ingenious. And, uh, uh, and, they, and they used that as part of their defense system. In Psalms 11.2, David reflects on something like this when he says, For luck! The wicked have bent their bows. They make ready their arrows on the string. They shoot secretly at the upright in heart. That's what wickedness does. If you're a Christian this morning, if you're a believer this morning, let me tell you something. You're going to get shot at. You're going to get shot at in the spiritual war as we walk uh, in this life. In Hebrews, I love what uh, the, the way that the, the author of Hebrews explains uh, this phenomenon. He says, for the time would fail me and how people would use the shield, for the time would uh, fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and David and Samuel and the prophets which through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises and stopped the mouths of lions, and watch this, and quenched the violence of fire. The imagery is stunning here. We are barraged. We are with a shower of flaming arrows, and, and without a shield, we're totally defenseless. We're going to get hit. We're going to get hurt. We're going to get wounded without the shield of faith. But with that shield of faith, whatever it is, we're going to be able to quench the fiery darts of Satan. 
with the water of God's word, with prayer, will be able to quench those fiery incoming missiles. So the shield is able to, to, to douse the arrows. Secondly, it, it can deflect the attack. At closer examination to the door shield, it says right here, taking the shield of faith. When you look closely at the Roman door shield, you'll notice that it is reinforced on the edges with a, uh, with a band of either brass or metallic uh, metal that reinforces the exterior of the, of the door shield. And in the center, there will be a metal plate and in the center of the metal plate will be a half ball round metal piece, all designed to deflect the incoming. And one of the things that the Roman soldiers train to do is when they get in close combat with the enemy, there's a couple of maneuvers that they would use with the shield. One is they would hold the shield up to deflect the swords in close combat, but then they would step forward and they would give a push with their, with their shield at aiming that iron ball at the face of the enemy, knocking them off balance so they could come at them with a sword. Well, that's part of the training that they had. It, uh, it, and, and so it was reinforced. And again, this is great imagery. I, I love what Proverbs 30 says. It says, he, talking about the Lord, he is the shield to those who put their trust in him. What the Lord wants to do as we use that shield is he wants to deflect the incoming. He wants to protect from the blows and, uh, of the attacker and the attack. So during the enemy attack, uh, the Roman soldier was subject to multiple blows, just not one, but multiple from arrows and from swords. But as long as he had his shield, he could deflect the onslaught of the attacking blow. So the, the shield is able to douse, it's able to deflect, but also it can defend the entire army from the attackers uh, against the incoming missiles of the attackers. And don't miss these two words. It says, above all. And, and what he's talking about is a technique that the Roman soldiers would use as, as part of their defense in a massive battle. They used a technique called the testudo formation or the tortoise or the turtle formation, and where they would deploy their shields overhead, in front, and on the sides, connecting them one to another. And, and when the soldiers connected their shields to, other, to, to one another across the across the battlefield, in unity they became invincible. They're, they're, they, they were able to then move across the battlefield in unity and, and uh, as, they, as a single unit. However, if one soldier would break rank, it would compromise the whole unit as they'd move across the battlefield in unity. Again, this imagery about breaking rank and, and compromise, this imagery uh, is, is so fascinating. When we connect our faith to one another as we walk across this spiritual battlefield, we literally become invincible. Isn't that kind of cool? When we connect our faith together. So, as we look at this important part of the full armor of God, we can't live without it. Because it, it douses, it deflects, it, it defends against those fiery missiles. And, and we say, okay, this makes sense. So tell me, Pastor, how do we construct and carry and use and deploy a shield of faith? That, that sounds great, but exactly how do we do that? How do we obtain, train with, and deploy the shield? Well, let me, let me go through some other passages of Scripture to explain that. First of all, number one, we, we begin by, be, by being saved through faith. You know the passage. 
Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace you've been saved through faith. Not that of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. This is what Paul is saying. He's saying that we are saved by faith and we're given the gift of salvation. So the million dollar question is faith in what? Just faith? Paul answers that question. Uh, uh, Luke, as, it, as he's quoting Paul in Acts chapter 16, 31, and here's what he says. You know the story, the Philippian jailer, you know, comes in, yells, what must I do to be saved? What does Paul say? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Pretty simple, right? Great passage of Scripture. See, here, here's the thing. It's not just faith that saves us. It's the object of our faith. It is Jesus Christ, faith in Christ, that saves us. Do you, I want you to notice two words that are used here. The, the word faith in, in Ephesians is pistis. Uh, it's the noun. And, the, and, the word, and in Acts, the Greek word for believe is pisteo. It's a verb. And, and so it's not just it's not just having faith. All of us, everybody has faith. Every one of you, whether you're saved or not, exercise faith when you walk in here and sat down. I don't think anyone walked over to a chair and said, I wonder about that chair. No, no. It may hold me, it may not. No, we just have faith. Uh, everyone has faith, but it's the object of our faith that saves us. In Psalm chapter 18, verse 2, it says, the Lord is my rock. He is my fortress. And my deliverer, my God, my strength, and whom I trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation. It's faith in Christ. You know what that means? This is this dynamic. Unbelievers do not have the shield. And that's why we see so much anxiety and fear, intimidation in an unsaved world out there. They do not understand this passage of Scripture that I'm saying. They do not have the protective shield that douses, defends, and deflects enemy fire. They're vulnerable. They're fighting a spiritual war without a shield. If you're here today and you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, number one step is to place your faith in Christ. He is our salvation. He is our shield. How do you do that? Simply, Lord, I believe, to fail in you. You died on the cross. You paid for my sins. And like Arnold said last week, I don't have any sin that I have to pay for now because he's paid for my sin for me and believe in him and, and, uh, uh, and become saved. Number two, so we're saved by faith in Christ. We are sanctified by faith in Christ. In Acts 26, God is talking to Paul, telling Paul he's getting ready to send him out to the Gentiles. And, and he said, I now send you to, uh, upon, uh, uh, to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light, from power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. You know the word sanctified is the same word that we get for holy. It's hagiazo, and it, it, it means to make holy. So positionally speaking, we trust in Christ as our Savior. He saved us. He set us aside and positionally made us holy. We're going to go to heaven because we trust in Christ as our Savior. Positionally speaking. Practically speaking, we're, we're being made holy through repentance and removal of sinful thoughts and, and the power of sin and passions and practices as we walk through this world. It's, it's, it's sanctification. While Christ has saved us from the penalty of sin through faith, he is continually, through faith, saving us from the power of sin as we trust in him. And, um, and, and the, thing, the thing that happens is that 
even after we trust Christ as our Savior, He continues to, continues to shower us with flaming arrows of condemnation, accusation, temptation, intimidation, blame, criticism, and feelings of guilt. They're still going to come. And when we let down our shield of faith, we're going to get hit. Over in Romans 1, it says the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So, so, so not only we, we save by faith salvation, we live by faith sanctification. How? how? Back, uh, we, we did this a couple of weeks ago. Back to Romans chapter 10, verse 8. The word is near you, in your mouth, in your heart. That is the word of faith, he sees, which, which we preach, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe, pisteo, in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Saved from what? Saved from the power of sin that's constantly coming after us even though we've trusted Christ as our Savior. So when, when Satan's missiles of condemnation and temptation and accusation and intimidation come toward us, we, by faith, can get behind the shield, the Word of God, closeness to Him in prayer, his word, and we're protected from the incoming. So we're saved by faith, we're sanctified by faith, and this is one more thing, we're shielded by faith. In, in 1 John chapter 5, this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith, feasties. He who has overcome the world, who is he who has overcome the world, but he who believes, pisteo, that Jesus is the Son of God. So not only is Satan shooting missiles at us, the world is shooting missiles at us. Not only is the world shooting missiles at us, oftentimes other Christians shoot missiles at us not knowing what they're doing. The Roman testeo or tortoise formation is a spectacular image of believers who connect their shields of faith one faith to another's faith as we march through this world wide battlefield and, and have victory. So, uh, again, we, we've got to be careful of this. We can't turn on each other. Because if we turn on each other, we get mad at each other. We do. I mean, there's, what happens is we break rank. What happens is we give a, an opening uh, for Satan to hit us with his flaming arrows. This past week, let me just stay on that for a minute. This past week, we had a FGA conference, a Free Grace Alliance conference, and one of the breakouts was how to deal with difficult people. And I thought, well, you know, I need to go to that one, see, see what to do. And, uh, and, and so I went in, and uh, the room was packed, you know, and I thought, wow, there's a lot of difficult people out there. What I learned is that the guy that was giving the lecture had just spent a year going through a devastation of attacks from within his ranks at his church and, uh, and, and struggled. I, I learned a little bit later that uh, one of the high-ranking um, organizers of our FGA conference just experienced a devastating year of uh, inner personal conflict in the church and just had to call in help to get him through it. I learned that a major church, a couple of major churches here in the area are going through the same thing. See, what Satan does, he not only attacks us from the outside, he not only attacks us from the world, what he does is he's able to attack us by just getting us crossways with each other. And we break ranks and he's able to hit us. And we have to pray for one another instead of attacking one another. And as we connect our shields of faith to one another, we're not only able to experience protection from incoming missiles, we are able to protect other Christian soldiers. Let me close with a story about faith. I told this uh, of the 210 class that Bob and, and uh, Carmen are teaching, and, and, I, and I kind of told a little bit about this story a few weeks ago. 
Let me share it with you. I want to, I want to introduce to you someone by the name of uh, Faye Loving. Faye uh, came to our church when we were still meeting over in the school. And when she came to our church and started, started coming, she just got diagnosed with a rare form of leukemia. I mean, it was a devastating missile that exploded her life. And, 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 and so she came, and we prayed, and, um, and, and she began to, to, to trust and have faith and say, okay, I, I believe we're going to make it, but the arrows kept coming. Her husband was diagnosed with, um, uh, with a, a, a type of diabetes that would cause him to start losing limbs, and it just kept coming. And, and the arrows kept coming. She got pneumonia. And, and um, one day her, her husband called me. It was the Christmas season. He called me and he said, hey, we're losing faith. She's not going to make it through the night. And the arrows just kept coming. So we went and prayed for Faye, and miraculously she, uh, she survived. But the arrows kept coming. And uh, so uh, one day she, she got a report, uh, and it was kind of positive. Uh, she had beat cancer. She was in remission. But the negative side of the report was that she had gotten a tainted batch of blood and now she had hepatitis B. The arrows kept coming. At the same time, Gail and I were going through a barrage of, of attacks. The missiles were hitting us from all directions. They were coming from the top, coming from the side, coming from everywhere. And we were, we, we were holding those little shields up, you know, trying to dodge and all. And, and one day we were just overwhelmed, and the two of us were just, in the middle of the day, we were lying in bed. We were just exhausted. We were grieved. Uh, we would weep. We'd pull the covers up over our head, try to hide from each other. I mean, it was, it was crazy, you know. And uh, some of you have gone through that. Uh, and the phone rang. And, and, I, and I reached over to answer the phone, and it was Faye. And she said, Pastor, um, do you have a minute to talk? Well, I didn't have a minute to talk. I barely hold it together. I said, sure. And she said, I got my report back from the doctor, and I, I'm in remission. She said, but the bad news is I, I, I got a bad batch of blood. I uh, got hepatitis B. It's incurable. Uh, I don't want to live any longer. I, I want to take my life. But I just want to make sure that I go to heaven. So would you come over and talk to me and assure me that I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go to heaven? You know what I felt like? I felt like, why don't you take both of us out, you know? I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, have you ever felt that way? I mean, just, just really discouraged. And I said, sure, 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 just, you know, and a thousand thoughts to go in my mind, hang the phone up. And, and Gayla looks over and she says, who is that? I said, Faye. She said, what does she want? I said, she wants me to come over and talk to her. She said, what? You can't do that. I said, I got to have the pastor. I mean, who else is going to go? She said, you're no shape to go. Look at your, go look at the mirror. Look at your face. You're no shape to go. Talk to her. I said, I, I have to. She's, she's um, talking about taking her life. She said, there's somebody else you can call. There's other preachers. You got to call somebody else, you know. I said, no, I got to go. Got to go. I'm telling you guys, I, I really didn't want to do this. I, I, I washed my face. I went down and got in the car, started driving over her house. I brought off a 242. I drove over 242. I cried all the way. I'm, I'm thinking, God, I'm no shape to do this. There's got to be somebody else. you got to help me. I, I, I turned on her block. I still cried. I said, God, you got to help me. I, 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 said, right, I, I said, now, if, if, I don't, if you can't help me get control over my emotions, I'm leaving. I, I'm, I'm not going to do it. And as I turned on her block, a peace came over me. Unbelievable. Pulled up in her driveway, went in the house. And she said, thank you for coming, Pastor. Uh, I, like I said, I want to take my life, but I want to be assured that when I take my life, that um, I'm going to go to heaven. What do you do? Yeah, once saved, always saved. Go ahead, you know. Or you lie. Oh, no, Faye, there's one unpardonable sin and you're about to commit. No, no, no. What do you do? 
And I said, Lord, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. So I walked inside and I sat down and I listened to her for a little bit, tell the story over again. And, and I didn't have anything with me. I said, Faye, do you have a Bible around here? She said, yeah. And I said, would you bring it to me? And she brought it to me and I opened it up. I didn't even know where to open it up. John 3.16 is about all I could think about, you know. And I, know where to, I didn't know where to open it. And then a passage came into my mind. and Flipped over to it, read it. And, and I thought, that was cool. And, and, and then another passage came to mind, and I, and I read that one. And there were a psalm, a proverb, a gospel. We're back over in Ephesians. We're here and there. And about 30 minutes of just recall, passages just coming in and, and recall. And reading the Word of God and praying in, in, intermittently, her countenance changed. And she said, you know what? I don't feel suicidal anymore. There, there's hope. God still wants to use me. By the way, that was 20 years ago, 25 years ago. She's still kicking today, you know. And, and I went through that. And, and I listened to the passages I was reading to her, wherever they came from. I went and sat in my car. And I thought, these are exactly the passage of Scripture that I needed. Do you see what happened here? I took my shield of faith, carried it into their room, I grabbed hers, and we clicked them together. And we became stronger. And the Word of God in prayer, as the shield of faith lifted up and quenched, deflected, defended from the fiery missiles that Satan was shooting at us. That's how it works. Jude, right before the book of Revelation. But you believe it, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Amen and amen. Satan's fiery missiles coming at you every day can be deflected by the shield of faith. So the question are, are his, are his missiles coming at you? Are they coming in from all directions? Do you feel like you're losing hope? Are you about to quit? Do you think, I can't do this anymore. I'm done. Too many arrows have come at me. One last slide. Here's what we do. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. Jesus wants to quench those darts, wants to draw you close to him in and under his shield of faith that he might fellowship with you. In our class this morning, here's what Bob said. He said, during those trials and temptations, you grow so close to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's incredible. On behalf of Pastor Dan and the folks at Community, thank you for joining us today at Community On Demand. Feel free to share this link with others, and please know you are always welcome to be our guest during a live service any Sunday morning at our campus in the Woodlands, Texas. For more information, just click on the link, www.cbcwoodlands.org. I hope you will again join us at Community On Demand.